So I think we had the wrong, uh, the wrong thing up here because we're not talking about where people are living today. We're talking about something else, so that's okay. We just got a fun insight to Beatrice's story and where she lives. She lives in this fun house, and she is from, where, who, where is she from? Brazil. Thank you, you guys for listening. Okay. I almost said Portuguese because we were just playing from Portuguese, Portugal from the game, you know, you guys get it. Anyways, um, have you guys ever had one of those moments to where you're talking with their friends and then all of a sudden you found out something about them that you have never known before and you like sit there and you think you're like, how did I not know this? Or who even are you? Because it's some big thing that you found out about them. Has anybody had that happen to them before? Kind of. Okay, I'll give you guys I'll give you guys an example if you don't know what I mean yet. So you have gone your whole life knowing that person and then all of a sudden you find out that they're actually really really into anime. And that's something that you never would expect from one of your friends or you pl they play an instrument and have play been playing it since like 5 years old and you're like, "Wait a minute, I didn't even know you were musically talented." Or just randomly, they're super into origami, and they can make those little cool dragons really tiny. Has, does any of your friends know how to make origami dragons? Yes. Yeah? That's so cool. So here's the thing, guys. You can know somebody and not really know them. Do you guys get what I mean? To where you can know somebody on the surface, but then you can hang out with somebody and... They won't know a lot, you won't know a lot about them, and they won't know a lot about you, and there's just some things to where you'll never tell that person, and they'll never tell you about something else. And so, for most of us, our friends are probably the people who get us, right? They're the people who know a lot about us. Do you, do you guys agree with that, or is that a false statement there? Perhaps. <laughs> and I know that there's some of you out there that has your, like, best friend, who definitely 100% most of the time gets you. And that's awesome, but there's probably not a lot of other people other than your close friends and maybe even your close bestie that totally gets you, right? And so there's a stat that I totally made up, but I think it's 100% true, and it goes like this. The majority of people don't feel like there's anyone who gets us 100%. Raise your hand if you agree with that statement. Yeah, so it means that the majority of people don't, don't always know us 100% of the time. There is always something that we have either not told them or they just don't know about us or have taken interest in. And so I think this is totally normal. We're not going to be super close or get really deep with everyone. But wouldn't it be nice if there was just a couple more people that understood us, you know, understood all of our quirks, our interests, our struggles, or our fears? But instead, most of the time, we kind of feel like nobody gets us. And you know who else feels that way? Literally everybody, like almost everyone in this room. Because did you see how many hands were just raised when we said this phrase that almost 100% of the time nobody gets us, right? And so the truth is that this nobody knows the real me feeling isn't that uncommon. And it's a really hard feeling to feel. It's one of the reasons why this idea of personal that we've been talking about this past two weeks matters so much. You know, because whether you knew this or not, you are actually wired to be known. We are wired for community. You are made to have somebody who gets you, who understands you, and knows what your real world is like. Not just this stuff that you tell people, but who you actually are on the inside. And this, my friends, brings us back to this guy that we talked about last week named Zacchaeus. And so, did you know that out of the first four books of the Bible, the Gospel of Luke is actually the only one that tells the story of Zacchaeus? So sometimes you'll find that in the Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that there's stories that repeat between the books. But this one, the story of Zacchaeus, is the only one that is shown in the book of Luke. And so because you see, Luke was writing to a mostly non-Jewish audience. And so for the first followers of Jesus, we're all really Jewish. Um, Jesus was Jewish when he was born, his family was Jewish, and a lot of his followers were Jewish. And so they kind of figured that everyone who followed Jesus would be Jewish too. But obviously, we can see from the stories that we hear in the Bible that that's not the way that Jesus operated. He was for anyone from any background. 
And so it was natural for the non-Jewish people to kind of not really feel like they fit in really anywhere because they followed Jesus, but most of the followers thought everybody was Jewish, and so they didn't fit into that Jewish um, population there. And so it's easy to imagine that these are the people Luke wrote about because these were the people that Luke was writing to because he wanted his readers to see how Jesus treated people like them. And so Luke shares the story of Zacchaeus, who, like we learned last week, was on the outside of the group. He was on the outside of society. Not a lot of people liked him because he was a Jewish tax collector, which, long story short, was a super bad thing to be during that time. And when Jesus comes to town, Jesus comes to Zacchaeus' town, he is dying to see Jesus just like everyone else. Because everybody wanted to know this very famous person at this point. Who was this person that was doing all of these miracles and preaching all of these sermons and had all of these followers? And Zacchaeus was like everyone else, and he wanted to know what was up with this guy. And so he shows up, and to get a better view, if you're familiar with the story, he climbs a tree, and, you know, he's short, so he needs to be able to see. I'm just kidding. I don't know if this guy was short or not. We just tell a story because he climbs a tree and we think he's short. (laughs) But I also imagine that Zacchaeus wasn't so sure how Jesus would feel about a guy like him. You know, a guy who collected taxes for the Romans and probably pocketed a little bit for himself. You know, he probably took a little bit off the top, charged some people a little extra so that he would be able to keep a little extra himself. Because guys, from a lot of the stories we see, Jesus looked out for the poor and the mistreated. And nobody was better at mistreating them or making them poor than Zacchaeus at that time because he was a tax collector. So he probably wasn't looking to stand out at all. He was probably looking for a far enough spot to where he could climb up a tree, he could be out of the crowd that didn't like him, and so he could just get a glimpse of this amazing guy that everybody was talking about. But then the craziest thing happens, and if you guys were here last week and saw saw Bailey tell the story of last week, Jesus looks up as he's passing by the street, sees Zacchaeus, and was like, hey, you should come down because I'm coming over to your house that night for dinner. And so it goes like this. So it says, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. And so we hear that and think in this day and time, if someone were to do that to us, if we don't have people, you know, at our house a lot, we would think, wow, that's a little bold. I mean, cook me dinner. I'm coming over with like absolutely no warning. I don't even know if I have any dinner at home. I maybe have a box of ramen from like three years ago that you could have Jesus. But in the context of this culture, it was a big honor to host someone for dinner. And so having someone in your home sent a message of friendship. And so why did Jesus invite himself over specifically to Zacchaeus' house? Why did he choose that one person that was far away, up in a tree, you know, it's kind of hard to climb down after he invited him, over to his own house? Because, guys, Jesus cared about what Zacchaeus cared about. You know, and even though he didn't seem like it on the outside, Zacchaeus cared about some deep stuff. Here's some things he cared about. The first thing he cared about was belonging. Can anybody relate to caring about belonging? Does everybody, does anybody not want to belong? in this room? Guys, he cared about being accepted. He cared about being seen, and he cared about being known. And how do I know that? How do I know that that's the things that Zacchaeus wanted? Because, guys, he was a human being, and we literally all want that. And we especially want that when we don't feel like we belong anywhere. Have you guys ever had that feeling of like you don't really belong anywhere? You're just kind of on the outside of things. You have a group of friends, but you're not the best friend of everyone. You maybe play soccer, but you're not the best person on the team, and so you kind of get left on the outside. You are maybe in band, but you're just one of the flutes. You know, you're just one of the saxophone players. Guys, Zacchaeus lived his life as an outsider, his entire life. Can you imagine that, being an outsider your entire life, not having any friends? 
And as a Jewish man, he didn't fit in with the Romans, even though he worked for the Roman Empire. And he didn't fit in with his Jewish neighbors because he taxed them on behalf of the Romans. If you guys didn't know this, the Romans and the Jews did not get along. See, Zacchaeus wasn't just climbing a tree just to see Jesus, just to see what he looked like. Guys, he was climbing a tree to see if he have mattered, if he mattered to Jesus, and to see if Jesus knew what mattered to him. And of all people, all of the people in Zacchaeus' life probably thought that they had already knew everything that they needed to know about this man, about this tax collector, because they knew as a tax collector, they knew exactly what he was like, and they didn't want to be associated with him at all. But not Jesus. Not him. Because Jesus knew that just because Zacchaeus had the label of tax collector, it didn't tell the whole story about who he was. If you've ever wondered what Jesus thinks about you, the story of Zacchaeus hopefully is an encouragement to you. But maybe, like me, when, you, when I was in middle school, you have always felt like there were only things that mattered to Jesus. There was only a couple of things. So maybe you thought that Jesus cared about how much you read the Bible. Are you reading the Bible every day? How long are you reading the Bible for? What chapters are you reading? Are you actually paying attention? But not what's going on in school. He doesn't matter. You know, he cares about you reading the Bible, but he doesn't care about what your grades are like, how you're being treated in school. Maybe you've thought that he just cares that you're praying. You know, how long are you praying? What are you praying about? Are you being super good with your prayers every day? but not about the relationships with your friends. You know, he doesn't care about what's going on between you and your friend that are having conflicts. Maybe he only cares about the holy stuff. You know, the times when there's Christmas, or maybe we're having a baptism or confirmation, but he doesn't care about the real stuff going on. He doesn't actually care, because all he cares about is all of these things. Friends, it gets personal, because Jesus knows what matters to you. He wants to know what matters to you. Tonight, I want you to know that things that matter to you matter to him. What, the things that interest you interest him too. He doesn't just know that you love soccer or music or you're super into theater. He knows the why behind why you love those things. He gets you personally. And that's why this week I want to challenge you to try both of these ideas. So one... I want you to talk to, Jesus about, talk to Jesus about what matters to you. Jesus cares about what you care about, guys, so start there. Pray about it. Share with him. Tell him, let him know about the things that you like. Let him know about the things you worry about. Tell him the things that fill you up and make you super happy and giddy when you do those things. Tell him about the things that drain you and that you don't really like or that are, you're scared about. Jesus is never bored hearing from you and hearing about you because it's personal to him when it comes to you and him. And to talk to others about what interests them. Not what interests you. Talk to others about what interests them. Because when it came to Zacchaeus, it wasn't personal for the crowd he was in. He, they made assumptions about Zacchaeus, but they really didn't get to know him or get him. You know, they didn't try. Jesus was the only one who knew what it really mattered to, to Zacchaeus was a sense of belonging. And so it's possible that there are people that you've made an assumption about too. I know I've made assumptions about people before, and I've written them off because of those assumptions. People who think you think are one way because of what you've believed about them. But you've never made it personal before. You've never reached farther than that. Maybe this week you can make it personal by being intentional in dis discovering the things that they actually like. Let go of the ideas that you've had about them and do, some, do for someone what Jesus did for Zacchaeus in that moment. In this letter to, in the church of, to the church of Philippi, Paul, he's writing a letter to the church of Philippi, and he writes about this very idea. So he says, Rather in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So look out for the interests of others. So what does that mean? This might mean that you ask your friends questions 
and you just listen to what they have to say, you're just really engaged in the conversation that what they're telling you. You don't try to tell, like, you know, you know how you have this conversation with somebody and they tell you something about themselves and then you try to tell, like, relate to them by telling something about you, but then you kind of make the conversation about you. Just listen to them. Listen to what they have to say. Maybe play something that your little brother or your little sister loves to play, even if it's not the favorite, your favorite thing in the world. Maybe you go and watch your friend play their sport or maybe you play their instrument in a, in a concert, even though you have no idea what's going on. Guys, I have no idea how to play football, but I would go and support some people that played football because that's something that they love doing. Maybe you make an effort to include the kid that's in the grade younger than you. You make them feel like they're seen, like they belong. Because there was a point in your life that you didn't feel like you belong or you were seen from your older kids. Everybody needs somebody who knows their name, just like Bailey talked about last week. And everybody needs somebody that knows them personally. But I want you to think about something this week. Do you guys really know what matters to the people around you? Have you actually gotten to know the people that you hang out with every day? When we take the time to make it personal with others, we are living like Jesus did. Jesus was never satisfied by making a, pers a judgment about a person from far away. He got close, he took his time, and he never let a label or an assumption inform his opinion. And he cared about what mattered to others because they mattered to him. There's a thing, he cared about what mattered to others because he, they mattered to him. It doesn't matter if he liked the things that they liked, he liked them. And so that's what we do with other people. It's personal because Jesus knows what matters to you. Now you have the chance to go and do the same for others. Will you pray with me? Lord, you know what matters to all of us. You know what's going on in our lives. You know our deepest selves. Thank you for that. Thank you for letting us be seen and letting us be known and letting us belong with you. Lord, I ask that you help us do that with others. You help us go out into the world and let other people know that they matter to us too. Let other people know that we are interested in what they're interested in and that we want to be able to do what they want to do because we love them and they matter to us. Lord, I ask that you help these students do that and you help these students see that. I ask that you be in their small groups tonight as they have good conversation and they bond with each other. In your name I pray, amen.